Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. It's time for some Saturday morning react tunes featuring Robotech, specifically episode 29, the Robotech Masters. We've got a lot going on in the show, a lot of changes that have been made since the war. But before we got into this actual episode, I wanted to tell everybody that I fully intend now to watch Do You Remember Love? So look for that, friends. Before we get started, though, if you could do me a favor and hit that like button, smash that subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, you'll be alerted next time we go live with Robotech or any of our sci-fi offerings. And of course, if there's anything that we do that you would like early or in its full length format, the link to the Patreon is in the description. Not a fan of Patreon? Join the aforementioned YouTube memberships. You'll get all of our episodes about a day early, plus bonus episodes like Robotech, Do You Remember Love? Friends, all that is then and this is now. And now it's time to jump into some Saturday morning react tunes featuring Robotech, episode 29, The Robotech Masters. Prepare to engage maximum warp reaction. And away we go. <laughs> Fanfare! Uh, full disclosure, I did find a copy of uh, Robotech Do You Remember Love? And I just wanted to check and, you know, just kind of see what the animation was like. And I happened to go on to a, a spot with Brie Tai. Wow. <laughs> it, it looks really cool. So I can't wait to watch that and see what changes or additions or just how they do it different. Because you all told me it's basically the story up until the war or the big war. So I'm safe to watch it now. But uh, you said there's changes to make it kind of like more succinct for like a movie format. Looking forward to it. I'm actually really looking forward to this too because it's such a decidedly different feel. It's like, um, I heard somebody make a comment that I thought was really good. It's almost like, um, it, it, it's, um, oops, excuse me. It's almost like you finished the main quest of a video game and now you're going back and doing the side quests. <laughs> I don't know if that's what it's like, but, um, you know, there's a, there's a different feel to it. I don't necessarily think that it's kind of like residual stuff. I think this is a, a new leaping off point for a, a new story. So we'll see. I'm very curious. But for the Robotech masters, the supreme rulers of the Zentradi, this barren earth could prove to be the promised land. Really? My lords, we may have found Zora's battle fortress. Good. Oh, furthermore, my lords, a routine scan of the fourth quadrant indicates a large discharge of protocol. Either the disciples of Zor have found the abandoned protoculture factory and have begun a new offensive against our Zentradi warriors, or the Invid have beaten us to the prize. Invid? All logic circuits suggest that the Invid have no knowledge of the whereabouts of Zor's battle fortress. Then we must assume that the Zentradi have indeed found the protoculture factory, ensuring a future for our robo technology. Okay, protoculture factory inside the SDF one, we knew that. Tact. My only fear would be that Zor's disciples may have mastered the inner secrets of Robotech. Zor's disciples? I've heard that name before, but... Our supply of protoculture is extremely low. We may not be able to use the phone system. The order has been given. Obey without question. We will make the jump immediately. Okay, so they're almost out of protocol. Since the final battle between the Zentradi and the Earth resulted in the near total... Dis wow. Ironically, thousands of giant Zentradi warriors died clutching tiny Minmay dolls. Minmay, the singer they found on Earth. Oh, that's so sad. That's so sad. The surface of the Earth has been leveled. Nothing remains standing except charred hulk. Just holding on to a Minmay doll. In the terrible wake of galactic holocaust, the few pitiful survivors of the once proud Macross city bravely struggled to pull themselves back. Wow. As they try to put their lives and civilization in order to begin again. Wow. I quit. This is... Yeah, they said the Zentradi were, were becoming... Shut up and don't interfere. I'm leaving. Where are you going? Yeah, they're, they're rebelling against the, the new culture. Meanwhile, at the command post, a new Macross city. Gentlemen. Yes, uh -huh. sir. I must apologize. <laughs> Exodor in the outfit. You were called up here on such short notice. Hello, Commander. Uh, hi. Rick, don't always act surprised when someone talks to you. You should be, but... Hi. That was terrible. Sorry. I'm worried about that charity concert tomorrow. If it goes like this... I'll be okay. Kyle, weren't we... This is a high-class restaurant. We let our patrons down. I know. 
Akaio, I thought you were gone. Then why don't we give all the money to charity? We have enough. We have, but not enough to make our dreams come true. You certainly ought to be able to understand that. Didn't they have like a huge fight? After you get dressed, I'll take you out for a good dinner, okay? With your money. I'm not very hungry, Kyle. We're going to eat anyway. My bangs are starving. And I'm a huge dickhead. You know how much energy it takes to be a dickhead? It's a high caloric burn. Come on, get in. He does seem like a, a rever. I don't want to go there. Then let me off and I'll go there myself. Oh. Hey, hey, why don't you keep control of the fucking car, Kyle? No, wait. Get back in the car. Why should I? I'll, I'll drive you as far as the city line. To the city line? You can walk the rest of the way, because I'm a huge prick. Based upon the available information, that the people of Earth and the Zentradi are descended from very nearly the huh? same ancestors. Really? Our genetic makeup points directly at a common point of origin. When's that? While examining the data, we noticed many common traits, including a penchant on the part of both races to overindulge in fighting. Well, that's true. <gasps> huh? Gasp, gasp. The people of Earth don't fight because we like it. We fight to defend ourselves from our enemies. That's nonsense, Commander. What? There have always been wars in- We don't fight. We don't argue for no reason. It really indicates the warlike nature of the human. Uh, Perfect example. Right now. <laughs> Facts, sir, do not lie. One moment. We're merely telling you the results of our best data analysis. Okay. Check your opinions. Um, your opinions. So we are all descended from the same race, are we? And who can say in what direction all of us are headed? How does this help us, though, at this point? Hi, Aunt Lena. Welcome back, darling. Oh, so Kyle wouldn't even wouldn't even go see his folks? Would it be okay with you two if I stayed here tonight? Of course it'd be okay. My girl, you can even have your old room back again. And it's not really your old room, it's where your old room was, since this is a new new build. That makes me sound like a little child who hasn't grown up at all. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> I'm not sure how funny that was, but apparently it was hilarious. My old room. It seems like a hundred years since I lived here. Oh, sometimes I wonder what I'm singing for. No, that's not true. No, stick with that. Explore that. This show is great at the bait and switch where you think that like everything's done with uh, Rick and Min May. No, you think everything's done with uh, uh, Min May and Kyle. No. My birth control. <laughs> Why I said that. I was out walking. Oh, by the way, about your birthday present. Uh, a catch. It's the medal that I earned that you left in the, the drawer in your childhood room. Minmay. Yes, Rick, what is it? Huh? Just Desolation, the lighthearted Muzak track. Oh, Rick, what have I done? I, I don't know. Paper, get your morning paper here. Here you are, mister. It's like Steely Dan did the soundtrack. This is my workout outfit. Rico, give me a hand with this. Hey, guess... Oh, hey. What happened? Guess what? Min May's back in town. She stayed at the restaurant last night. Oh, they have a cleaning business? That's awesome. Hey, we're supposed to be dry cleaners and not gossip reporters. Now, either you shape up or ship out, or I'm just gonna have to... Huh? What? Uh -huh. is that... It is! What? It's Min May. Hi! She's beautiful. Do you remember us? Do we remember you? We've all met before. Meanwhile, as the Zentradi lose their minds, Mare. So they're shaking people down? They're a hell of a gang. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Rick. What are you doing up so early? Um, well, I wasn't sleeping too well. Huh? Why not? Remember when we decided we were never going to talk again? <gasps> oh, listen, I forgot to tell you. I put your picture in my album. You did? Huh? That was sweet. I hope you don't mind, but I, uh... Huh? Min May. Min May. She saw me talking with another woman. <laughs> Min May. Cause we're children. I said shut up. Huh? Oh. Come on. Rick, what the hell are you gonna do? I told you I understand your problems, young fella, but you must be, be reasonable. Quiet, fatso, or I'll squash you. Got it? Be quiet, fatso, or I'll squash you. Mm -hmm. huh? Authorities are here. <laughs> the, here are the authorities, everybody. Then 
If we shoot you, we'll kill each other. Now you listen to me, and you listen good. I know life with us is hard for you, but the authorities want to help you with your problems if you give them a chance. Keep your shit about you. I'm good with my fists, and I can handle practically any weapon. So what do you say? Can you help me? Speak up. I can't hear you. <gasps> I mean, they have to have active defense forces. My answer is no. <laughs> if you can't help me solve my problem, then what's the point in saying you or your government will talk about it? My <laughs> oh, take that. My signal, blast them. Well, my signal, unleash hell. Uh, wait, Dan, hold your fire. I was premature with my flick. Come back. You'll regret this. When we first came here, you thought their culture was such a great thing. It's almost like they need like a psychiatrist or like a psychologist. Centrati are getting more and more dissatisfied. We're gonna have to do something. I wonder, what'll they do after they leave here? Who knows? I'm, I'm more curious about the invid. The invid that the Robotech Masters talked about. What's that? All right, Chiron. Yes, sir, I'm sure. Our spies have reported the thousands of dissatisfied Zentradi are leaving town. They are estimated to be around 10,000. Dear God. Interesting occurrence, wouldn't you say? Worth the two year wait in a terrible place like this? <laughs> Worth the two year wait. Eh? Hey? Indeed. Oh, a Zonium? I want you to lead all the escapees here. And I want you to tell all the micronized Centrati that if they come, I'll return them to their original side. Global conquest? What are you going to do after that? Even as Chiron's troops cheer their bloodthirsty leader, a worried manager anxiously awaits his star. A worried manager? Huh? Minmay's here. Minmay, she's in the dressing room now. Oh, well, okay. That shouldn't be a huge surprise. Sorry I'm late. I don't know why we even bothered to do this gig. There's hardly anyone out there. Mm. We? Uh-huh. I'll just sing songs for myself. All for myself. So just sing for a se What am I going to do? I'm so important to this duo. I'm the one that takes in all the money and spends it. Who's going to do that? I'm Kyle. I'm insufferable. Not a word of this is to leave this room. If it were to get out, the damage would be catastrophic. Yes, yes sir. Who's in here? Yesterday, we finally spotted the Zentradi Automated Robotech Factory satellite. Within the satellite are being constructed space cruisers large enough to destroy the Earth with a single blast. What? It is a terrible thing. Listen carefully. I want you to survey that system and bring me additional data on the satellite. Huh? huh? Samiria, Max, Lisa, and Rick? For our own defense, we have to have as many space cruisers as we can lay our hands on. You understand that? Yes. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, at least Exodore's still here helping. Oh. This is a good bookend. This is the strongest part of the episode. Can we just hear the doll sing? We're not, we're going to zoom in. And then we're going to take our time zooming out to buy as much time to fill this episode as possible. A sad song, which is a constant reminder of the final outcome of catastrophic war. At once an anthem of victory and an omen of battles yet to be fought. The narrator adds so much. They really should do a lot more in narration, in episode narration. All right, everybody, we just got done watching Robotech episode 29, The Robotech Masters. And the only thing left to do is talk about it. All right, everybody, we just got done watching Robotech, episode 29 of the Robotech Masters for our Saturday morning React tunes. Um, this was, in my opinion, in full disclosure with this one, this was a step back for me because it's almost as if this one was written independently of Reconstruction Blues. The reason why I say that is we had a lot of the events of Reconstruction Blues almost like retconned here, you know? Especially the relationship stuff between Rick and Lisa and especially Kyle and Min Meg. In Reconstruction Blues, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but we had a, uh, I joked about it during the reaction being about a, a bait and switch where we basically see some type of resolution between the Kyle and Min May relationship where, you know, Kyle's drinking and Min May's like, you know what, man, F you, I'm out of here. You do whatever the fuck you want. I'm gone. And that was pretty much how it ended. Like there was no reconciliation at the end of the episode. No even narration that said, oh, they reconciled later. You know, and then we had the big, I don't want to say blow up, but it was like Lisa basically saying, you know, enough of me cleaning your your 
your fucking barracks and your, you know, your house and everything, Rick, I'm out of here. You know, you don't appreciate me and I'm gone. And uh, Rick was like, huh, what? You know, that's because he's Rick. And um, then all of that stuff, which was a lot of like relationship resolutions in Reconstruction Blues were forgotten in this episode. Um, another thing that was forgotten, and I, I, if they're sending Miria and Max out on this mission that Global wants, well, where's their kid? You know, because we saw a kid in Reconstruction Blues. I don't know. Um, again, th th and then the animation with this one definitely seemed rushed, like really rushed. This was one of the weaker animation kind of offerings that we've had. Animation, I never, I never detract from an episode story because it has like poor animation. I can always, you know, I, I look at the story for what it is. The animation, I always say that if it's good, it just, it, it enhances the story of the episode. But, you know, if it's bad, it doesn't, it just doesn't add anything to it. I don't let it take away from it. But unfortunately, this one had poor animation and a really disjointed story that, basically was like a recollection clip episode. We've seen these before where they come forward and they're like, you know, all this happened and that happened. And they just show us different clips of animation. You know, we had the original moment where Rick met Min May and fell through her, the old restaurant back on in Macross City. Um, you know, so it was just, there's just a lot of kind of repetition, you know, the initial battle showing the SDF-1 go in with the, the Robotech Masters narration, which was decent. And, you know, I like the information provided by the Robotech Masters. Um, but again, it's, you know, they throw so much stuff out there and it's sort of, I mean, not sort of, it's definitely disjointed from like the information we received before. The only thing that I know for sure is the SDF-1 housed the the protoculture factory or the last of them. And everybody's running out of that shit. You know, whether it's Britai and uh, Dolza's group and now the Robotech Masters, everybody is like running on fumes with this shit. So they desperately need it, which makes the SDF-1 or at least the Robotech, or the protoculture factory that's inside of it incredibly important. You know, one of the, I guess, the greatest resource left for at least the Zentradi in the galaxy. I'm curious too about the like, disillusionment that they're talking about with the Zentradi. It's, I guess it's just, you know, life is way more boring than we thought it would be. You know, it's that, I guess, I, I kind of an inherent kind of you know, bloodlust that they have is what's kind of causing them to be aggressive. Maybe it's like a rage or like an anger issue type of thing. We don't see everybody experiencing that though. I mean, we did see that, you know, Conda and Rico and Braun were a little clippy with one another, which we really haven't seen before. We've seen them argue, but you know, we, they were decidedly clippy, you know, where it almost looked like it could escalate to like physical or a real fight or an argument, you know, so it's interesting to see exactly how the Zentradi kind of, the situation with the, at least the earthbound Zentradi, because 10,000 seems like a lot, but then again, we don't know how many defected to begin with or how many kind of after the, the big battle came down to earth. Um, I would assume it was way more than 10,000. You know, I can't imagine that like, you know, 90% of them have decided to defect again or return. I think it's a smaller portion. We do need more numbers like that to kind of bounce off of one another so we have an idea, but numbers, time frames, Robotech's not that great with those. This was a stumble coming out. I thought Reconstruction Blues was really good, and I think that this was a stumble after the kind of the establishment that um, uh, uh, Reconstruction Blues did. I will say this, though. That is a very powerful image and um, of the... Uh, Zentradi warrior outside of his craft, dead, you know, skeleton inside, uh, you know, been there to basically have the, you know, the elements pick away at his his flesh, sitting there with holding the Minmay doll, the packaged Minmay doll. I thought that was an incredibly powerful message, you know, like that was his, that was, you know, people, soldiers would die, you know, holding onto the lockets of their loved ones or letters from home or pictures of their family and, you know, their kids and whatnot. And he's sitting there holding on to that Minne doll for, you know, at the end of his life. Like that was the most precious thing. That's what he was fighting for. Incredibly powerful image that I wish they would have built around a little bit more. And I think they really could have. I think they really could have proven that, um, you know, Min Mei doesn't have to become a joke or Min Mei doesn't have to become, she's always a to me, but Min Mei doesn't have to become something that like the Zentradi outgrow. You know what I mean? I think that it, in many ways, Min Mei should be like the unalterable focal point for the Zentradi. Like she is it. She can't, you know, no one can tarnish her in their eyes. She is the reason that thing that they hold on to at the end of their life 
you know, that's the the reason we did all this. We fought, we died, you know, we defected. It was for her, for this music, for this song, for the experience, the way it makes me feel. That should have been played into more, I thought, because now they're making it look like, you know, that Min May no longer holds the same type of effect, you know, especially over the Micronian or human populace. And now, you know, she's drawing fewer people. The way that everything's been established, she's a huge superstar. She's somebody that, uh, I, I mean, she, again, I loved her inclusion in the final battle. I thought that it was absolutely fantastic. I thought her singing kind of giving that, you know, the overture to, to, to you know, the, the soundtrack of the battle, the score, the uplifting reason we're fighting, um, you know, and also the deterrent to anybody would hear that, you know, the infection of the the, the pop culture and the way it made, made them feel it was really good. I it just seems like all the colors draining out of this right now. You know, we don't have any real direction. Um, a lot of the kind of tent poles that we had established at the end of the war seem to have faltered quite a bit. And um, we're in a post-apocalyptic society that seems decidedly more post-apocalyptic than it did in Reconstruction Blues, if that makes any sense. It's like this episode did nothing to kind of reinforce kind of the hope that little bit of hope that we had, you know, we had problems, but we had a, a hope kind of in Reconstruction Blues. This one basically said, you know, where I thought like Reconstruction this is the best way to put it. When Reconstruction Blues came out, it almost looked like, you know, we had pulled out of the dive that humanity and Zentradi allies were kind of like it would all it was almost game over. But we were able to pull it up and start kind of like rebuilding society and civilization. Now it looks like with this episode, it looks like they're you know, going back down with Robotech Masters. We'll see, though. Anyway, friends, if you could do me a favor, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, ringy ding ding that bell for notifications, and you'll be alerted next time we go live with Saturday Morning React Tunes featuring Robotech. And of course, if there's anything that we do that you would like early or in its full-length format, the link to the Patreon is in the description. But friends, all that is then, and this is now, and now it's time for us to say goodbye. So where should we say goodbye from? Friends, you're not going to believe it. I thought about this during the episode. Where should we say goodbye from? We bought a ticket. We sat down in the concert in the hopes that we could reignite the love for Min May. So what brought everybody together before could maybe, maybe heal the wounds that are happening right now. Not sure, my friends. Only time will tell. And until that time that we join together again to watch Robotech, Vulcan roll. And I'll see you.